so my name is Yin Yi. I represent Phoenix Solar Private Limited. Uh, where are, we are a solar PV uh, systems installer. Part of a larger group, a German group incorporated in 1999. Uh, the Singapore office set up in 2006. We are eight years old soon. Uh, and um, the Malaysian office uh, became operational in 2010. So since incorporation where we were three staff and a business plan, today we've got 30 people. Uh, we've completed 12 megawatts of rooftop systems and over 70 megawatts of ground mounted utility scale uh, systems. And of course, as a part of a larger group, we've, we've got well over one gigawatt of uh, projects done. So what we're talking about today, very quickly, um, how do you build uh, PV compatible um, buildings or rather, you know, what do you need to think about before you, you uh, install PV on your system? And if you've got any control over the building that you're going to do, what are the things you need to think about? We're only going to talk about three things today. Um, first one, let PV shade your property, not the other way around. Uh, face the sun uh, always and uh, design your building with PV in mind right from the beginning. So starting with the first one, uh, here's a system that we, we completed for Elkin Distribution Center. It's actually based in USJ, uh, Subang Jaya. Client wanted to build a car park um, and to take advantage of the feed-in tariff. So the PV provides a shelter, shade for cars and motorcycles and of course anybody walking by who needs a break. Um, this one we finished in December. We met the feed-in tariff. It has, uh, it's, it's considered a building integrated uh, PV, so we, we were able to get the bonus points for building integration as well as building material. Uh, it's, it's fully waterproof and everything. So, <laughs> This one, 2009, we completed ST building over in Putrajaya. Solar modules on the rooftops facing north, south, east and west provides electricity obviously to the building and also provides shade, you know, um, brings down the, the temperature of the building and we can talk about that a little bit more. Um, back in 2009, this was the first building with the Green Mark Platinum uh, under the Singapore Green Mark program and GBI Platinum, first also in Malaysia. Right, um, moving on to residential solutions. This is, uh, you know, Singapore's first, um, well, zero energy, not quite building, but zero energy house. Uh, and it was also the recipient of the first green mark goal for landed property. Now, the reason why we wanted to show this is uh, it's a standard semi-detached house. So you get plenty of this in Malaysia. And the client has pretty much put PV panels, you know, to cover all aspects of the roof except for a little bit of exposed roof on, uh, on the other end, and we'll show you some of the benefits of putting you know, the PV on. Uh, here's a profile of the roof. We've got modules up here, modules down here, and this is the exposed roof. And to test, experiment to see what sort of real benefits in terms of shading to the building, in addition to the electricity, we've put uh, one, two, three, four temperature sensors on the building, one on the exposed roof, one uh, on top of the PV module, one below the module, which is un just under the roof, and then one to measure the ambient temperature. And then for information, west that way and east that way. Okay, so charting the temperature sensors, uh, on the X axis we have the temperature, and why we've got the time of day. So starting at 7 o'clock in the morning and 10 o'clock in the evening. Here's the temperature for the ambient temperature. That's just temperature of the whatever outside. And then we've got the temperature of the exposed roof. Temperature of the PV modules. So you remember the, the, um, the sensor for the exposed roof was kind of like sitting around here and then the module one was up there. So you see a slight difference only because the sun was coming from the east, it warmed the module first and then it hit the roof. So you see just that section between sort of 7 o'clock and 11 o'clock, uh, there's a difference in temperature but more or less once you hit 11 o'clock, uh, temperatures rose more or less the same for both the exposed module and exposed roof. And then you have the sensor underneath the roof and amazingly, you see at least 17% temperature difference. So that basically means that the attic underneath the roof, the rooms just uh, underneath the roof, 
a 17 degrees, you know, it benefits from this uh, cooling effect and the shading effect of the PV. So imagine if that's for your building in terms of energy efficiency, you'd save heaps on your aircon costs. Okay, so where to put your PV system on the rooftop? You get a nice roof, you know, just put it, you know, on top there. Sometimes, and, and then your PV system is supposed to last you 20 years and generate electricity. Sometimes your neighbor decides, oh, oh, they're going to put something higher than yours, uh, and suddenly you've got sort of shading, you know, coming onto your roof. So that's not very good, um, but even worse, the other side decides to put some more, you've got a sandwich, and it's, sorry, like it's mom post already that time, you might have to shift the module, but, um, so you're thinking, oh, um, when you build a PV system, especially if you've got any influence about it, um, look to see what's going on um, with the surrounding. You've got buildings coming up. This one, of course, you can't anticipate. You've got trees, trees grow. Um, and then, you know, sometimes it's worth finding out what the zoning and the, 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 zoning and the permit area is around your, your, your building, say, for the next 10 or 20 years. You might think, okay, the whole, you know, if you've got a little bit of shading, does it really matter? Uh, if you're installing crystalline modules, uh, it matters a lot. Uh, here, some examples of shading, uh, and you think, okay, maybe just half a cell is shaded, just a little bit there shaded, just a little bit there shaded, never mind, it's okay. Depends on what your definition of okay is. Uh, shading just little portions of your module basically means your output drops by half. If you shade the full cell, or the full two cells there in the middle of this um, 9x4, your PV module drops to zero. So shading is not good, and a little bit of shading can be even worse than you imagine. Um, and this is simply you know, because modules today have a, a bypass diode. Now what's the use of the bypass diode? It protects the modules, and if you've got excessive shading, um, they develop hotspots if you don't use the bypass diode to get past the, the, the high resistance area. So if you get a little bit of shade, um, the bypass diode kicks in, essentially then you end up with a 30% drop or one third drop in the performance of the module. Shade moves on, you get another one third drop and that's because the, the way it's, the, the, the stringing is done. And when you get a full shade on, or you know, one, one left, your, your module's pretty much not performing at all, you're getting zero. Shade moves away, you get another 30, you know, one third comes back on, keeps moving a little bit more, another third comes back on, and finally, when there's no more shade, you get the full uh, power. So where we are, you know, you, you know the, the sun rises east-west, you get a little bit of building here, um, it makes a lot of difference. <coughs> here again, uh, illustration of the same issue, uh, we've covered one name card onto one cell, and you see based on the IV curve, you know, it drops dramatically. Thin film modules are much better as far as shade tolerance is concerned. If you cover half uh, the module, you know, it, the output drops by half, you cover you know, a quarter by quarter and so on and so forth. Um, but again, depends on which direction because the thin film um, cells are long. So if you cover the other way, um, you get a disproportionate reduction, but it's still overall much more effective than crystalline. Some examples <coughs> of uh, PV systems in Singapore. You could say you plan, but in this case, the tree was there well before the module was, so somebody obviously wasn't looking. On the other side, you had a bunch of birds obviously looking and enjoying it, so they were sitting, or they somehow enjoy sitting you know, on the modules, and I tell you, bird poop, if it's sitting there for one week and no rain, it sticks, man. Okay, so, next uh, rule of thumb, face the sun. Obvious enough, you'll be surprised. So this part of the world, um, we're on the equator, so the mod, uh, sun's mostly overhead. As long as you've got a building where, you know, the, the, ropes not, the roof is not so steep, you can put your PV on the rooftop, in the roof, on the slope roof, in the slope roof, on the flat roof, in the flat roof, uh, and so on and so forth. Where you don't want to, more importantly, where you don't want to locate it is in the facade, as you see in many European countries, in the facade. 
um, any of these louvers. So the top one works, the rest of them don't. And if it's too steep, because it's the same, you know, you end up having the same situation as the facade. Uh, and this is just simply because the sun's overhead. When you get a certain amount of light, wow. Hang on, let's speed this up. So pretty much you get the longer shadows, you get, you know, um, it's spread out over a wider area, you get less quality. Um, we, and we know this for a fact, because in 2009, we put up this, the PV array uh, on this building. We've got the PV on the rooftop, and then the client also wanted the BIPV facade. It was all trendy, um, and also it looked kind of nice from the architect's point of view. So if the architect wants it in, you put, in, you put it in. But uh, when you monitor the performance, <coughs> that's your standard rooftop array. That's your BIPV. Huge difference. Okay, who? Anyone, if you're all paying attention, uh, which end, oh, uh, which side, north, south, east, west, is the building facade facing? West. West, west, west. Hey. Good job. Okay. If you have to use BIPV, consider using it as a skylight. This is something we installed at Applied Materials. It's a, one of their 10% light through um, modules. From the outside, it doesn't look any, like anything exciting. From the inside, gorgeous. Uh, staff area, you know, you get light in, natural light, um, cuts off the glare, and it generates electricity. Okay, so. Down to the point, how do you design your building with uh, PV in mind? This is an, ex, um, an experiment or you know, one of those things that they install in universities uh, and you know, to see how each technology performs and you know, which kind of slope kind of thing. So Singapore Polytechnic in Singapore, they installed a whole bunch of arrays. This one was tilted at 15 degrees, never washed at all. Uh, and you see some accumulation of dirt, but barely anything. Contrast with uh, arrays installed at a three degree slope, and you see huge, lots of accumulation of dirt. So that makes a lot of difference because you remember we talked about shading, and you think, ah, yeah, never mind, a little bit only. The little bit matters, yeah? Um, still on the, so you know that where we are in the tropics, 10 degrees, 15 degree slope is great. So if you're putting it in the building or you have any input at all in the design of the building, put in the roof straight away. Here we worked with an architect right from the beginning. Um, and initially this was going to be a seven degree roof. Not that much difference, but you know, from a PV perspective, it, makes it, 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 it helps. So we convinced him to just up it up a little bit to 10 degrees. It doesn't compromise the design of the building. But when you put in the PV, <coughs> it looks really it looks re really good and it performs. Here, um, non-10 degrees, so what we've had to do is put in the structures to enable the 10 degree slope. Okay. The other thing when you're putting in a um, carport or some kind of trellis, so if you're going to put it in anyway, again, uh, ask the you know, civil contractor you know, just to raise one end, one column, a little bit taller than the other, so again, you end up with a 10 degree slope. That doesn't cost very much, just that incremental bit of uh, steel. Whereas if you've got a flat cover, trellis, um, then you know, you have to have the extra steel, Opa, sorry, um, then you're gonna have the extra steel you know, to put it on, and then you mount the modules on top. You know. A, it's effort, you know, B, it's engineering, and C, I'm sorry, it just doesn't look very nice. So here's something we did again um, in Singapore, Clean Tech One. Uh, it's one of their new eco park type um, areas. And um, the clients got done, modules etched all along uh, the four corners and then pretty much filled in you know, PV wherever they, they could. Uh, it's also 10 degree slope. The one thing again, if you've got any influence at all in the design of this building, it's, it, you've got a flat rooftop. It's, it's wonderful, you can put lots of things on top. So the M&E guys love it. They put everything that they can possibly imagine on the rooftop. But then that means there's not a lot of use of space. You can't use it for anything else. So if you can, you get these guys to move everything to the corner. All these 
bits, move it all here, and then you've got all that space that in case you want to put PV in later, you've got the whole roof available, rather to try and you know, put a bit here, put a bit there. Okay. Um, roof seams, that's the other thing that's really good. If you're putting in a metal roof, try to install metal roof. Um, oh, gosh, I'm not doing this very well. Uh, try to install with the metal roof with the roof seams where you can actually clamp it on. Because if not, uh, and you get a trapezoid roof profile, you, you'd have to penetrate the roof. And the last thing any one of us wants to do, or any of you want us to do, is to penetrate roof and then you know you run the risk of who's responsible for waterproofing. So here we've had to stick on you know a, a support rail uh, and then from there you know put in all the other rails. Whereas if you've got that kind of profile, all you do is just clamp, uh, put the modules, the, the rails on top, stick on the modules. It's fast, it's efficient. Again, it looks much nicer as well. And here, this is something we've done for Lonza, uh, a pharmaceutical company. They've got a curved roof, and that's a curved metal roof, calzip or clip lock, one of them type things. And uh, here you can see, because they've got the, the, that standing seam, we've just put the clamps straight through, uh, put through the uh, structures, and then you've got this beautiful roof that just follows the line, the, curve, the curvature of the building. Um, what's this one? RC flat roofs. Okay, so then you've got a wonderful concrete um, building, nice flat concrete. You've got your guys working on it, and you go, okay, you know, I may want to put PV or I may not, uh, but uh, let them finish everything first, and then the PV guys can come in. After all, it's a nice flat roof. I put all the M&E equipment to the side already. They've got nothing to complain about. But um, here's another thing that's really useful. If you're going to put um, PV on an RC roof, consider having the PV guys work very closely with your roofing guys and put in the anchor bolts before you do the waterproofing. So then you've got a small little metal plate there, you can screw the bolts in uh, and then the waterproofing guys come in, waterproof the whole thing, when they're finished, the PV guy comes in to finish everything else. Otherwise, you have to put the concrete ballasts, they're heavy um, and it's just really not necessary. So this is something that we've done uh, recently. Uh, worked with the waterproofing guys. Not the most fun, but you know, it, the results phenomenal. Okay, so this is the Singapore Sports Hub, uh, the new national stadium, and uh, the PV systems that have gone in. Okay, so to summarize, um, reduce cost. Uh, very simply, trying to work with a 10 degree roof, uh, 10 degree slope of the roof. It's cheaper to install the modules flush than to try and erect you know, additional structures after that. Um, Calzip and uh, Cliplock uh, roof, you know, they have the clamping. You, know, you, you can clamp it in. It's very easy. Again, it's very fast. Um, and then you avoid the trapezoidal ones where you can't clamp anything, which means you have to drill. Uh, trellis, again, very cost effective just to increase that little bit, you know, uh, when you're putting it in, then you get your 10 degree slope again, and for the RC roof, you know, to put through so you avoid the whole waterproofing later on. Bang, that's it. <laughs>